Sadhu, 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 Namo Tassa Bhagato Arhato, Samma Sambuddhassa, Namo Tassa Bhagato Arhato, Samma Sambuddhassa, Namo Tassa Bhagato Arhato, Samma Sambuddhassa, Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Supremely Enlightened One, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Homage to my teacher, Lukaswami Nuhasi, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Venerable Bhante in the monastery and meritorious lay disciples. Now these days people are talking about the death of a terrorist leader. So how did you feel about that when you heard that incident? How can we understand such things in terms of the teaching of the Supreme Buddha? Supreme Buddha had an extraordinary knowledge to recollect past lives of beings. According to that knowledge, Supreme Buddha has preached very clearly we have acted in the same way many times, countless times in this long journey. We have done the same thing. We have killed thousands of people and we also have got killed in the same way in this long journey of sansara when we were beheaded the stream of blood we have shed is greater than the waters of the four great ocean do you understand so we have killed innocent people like that many times as a result of our wicked deeds evil deeds we have uh, got killed many times we have suffered in hell for yawns and yawns experiencing very painful feelings so we there is a potential in our lives we are in a danger of being born again like that terrorist leader and doing the same evil deeds supreme mother saw very clearly on the other hand in our uh, pile of karma there may be such powerful bad karma that we can't see so when we die so we have come to this human world we have been born as human sons and daughters after a long time after a very long time so when we die if such a bad karma, if such a powerful bad karma emer uh, were to emerge, we would be end up 
in hell so primuda saw that we are in a danger of falling into hell because of such evil deeds so when we try to understand the reality of this life that way we can't see a big difference between our lives and that terrorist leaders life that is why supreme buddha stressed teaching this dhamma to stop this journey of sansara as soon as possible and we can't expect a world without such terrorism we have to live among such people and we have to get killed again and again in the future if we didn't realize this dhamma we would die many times due to such attacks now do you understand the purpose of the appearance of the supreme buddha in this world do you understand the purpose of that teaching so when one understands this real nature of the life uh one can pay attention to find a solution when one uses one's wisdom to find a solution if only the teaching of the supreme buddha is found in this world one will be able to find the cause of this suffering first of all what is the cause not realizing the four noble truths supreme buddha explains the reason is not realizing the four noble truths so you should make effort supreme buddha advises that way you should make efforts now to realize the four noble truths that is the only way to escape from this uh fear of insecurity and this dangerous uh world so tonight again we are very fortunate to learn that teaching leading to the realization of the four noble truths So this sutta is in the Majjhima Nikaya, Middle End Discourses. This is a very profound, excellent and wonderful sutta preached by the Supreme Buddha with extraordinary wisdom. Dhatu Vibhanga Sutta The Exposition of the Elements what is the name of this sutta dhatu vibhanga sutta the meaning the exposition of the elements okay so when we try to understand this sutta or when we are listening to this sutta we should be clever enough to understand the purpose of listening to this Uh, sutta and the purpose of practicing the dhamma according to this sutta we should understand by following this teaching by applying this investigation to our lives we will be able to escape from the danger of falling into bad walls doing many evil things 
by being born as terrorist leaders and engaging in such uh, evil and cruel things that is why we are listening to this Dhamma in order to escape from such dangers so isn't that a very great opportunity for us hmm? yes because we are learning very helpful path to in order to escape from such dangers okay that is uh, this is that path our great teacher supreme buddha on one occasion was wandering in Magadhan country in India so that night uh, Blessed One eventually arrived at Rajagaha so the Blessed One had to uh, find a place to spend that night There, the Blessed One had a friend named Bhagava. His name was Bhagava. Householder. So the Blessed One went to the uh, Bhagava. He was a potter. You know a potter? Who uh, makes yes, pottery, like clay using clay yes pots and other uh, things and said to uh, potter Bhagava Bhagava if it is not inconvenient for you I will stay one night in your workshop now that Bhagava had a workshop where he makes those pots And he said, it is not inconvenient for me, Bhante, but there is a homeless one, another monk, already staying there. If he agrees, then stay as long as you like. Now who was there in that workshop? Another monk. Now there was a son named Pukkusati who had gone forth from the home life into homelessness out of faith in the Blessed One. There was a son in a village named Pukkusati but he hadn't seen the Supreme Buddha before but he became a monk in the name of the Supreme Buddha wearing robes him by himself then the blessed one went to the venerable Pukkusati and said to him if it is not inconvenient for you Bhikkhu I will stay one night in the workshop then this uh, Pukkusati the other monk Venerable Pukhsadi said to the Blessed One, Friend, the potter's workshop is large enough. Friend, let the Venerable One stay as long as he likes. Did he recognize the Buddha? No, he just addressed, saying, Friend. Then the Blessed One entered the potter's workshop prepared a spread of grass are there comfortable mattress and chairs in that potter's workshop? no that is how Supreme Buddha spends most of his uh, life under trees, in caves in the forests prepared a spread of grass at one end and sat down folding the blessed one's 
legs crosswise, setting the body erect and establishing mindfulness in front of the Blessed One. The Blessed One started to meditate. Then the Blessed One spent most of the night seated in meditation. And the Venerable Pukusati also spent most of the night seated in meditation. He was in the other corner of the hall, very silent, calm, quiet. Then the Blessed One thought, Oh, this monk conducts himself in a way that inspires confidence. That means, Blessed One had a very pleasant mind about the behavior of that monk. Oh, that monk is very calm, very peaceful. Suppose I were to question him, so the Blessed One asked Venerable Pukkusati, Bhikkhu, under whom have you gone forth? Who is your teacher? Whose Dhamma do you profess? Then the Venerable Pukkusati answered, Friend, there is the recluse Gautama, Samana Gautama, the son of the Sakyans, who went forth from a Sakyan clan, from a king's family. He was a prince and he renounced the palace. Without the help of a teacher, he realized the reality of this life and became a Buddha. Friend, now a good report of that blessed Gautama has been spread to this effect. Now he is saying about the Buddha. With whom? With the Supreme Buddha. You know, friend, that blessed one is an arahant. He is free from all defilements. He is fully enlightened. He realized the Four Noble Truths without anyone's help. Because he, he understood, I heard from people that he, he understood because of not realizing the Four Noble Truths. We have fallen into this sansara. And we have to be born again and again in this sansara. So he was very wise to realize this Four Noble Truths and escape from this cycle of birth and death. He had extraordinary knowledges. He discovered an excellent path to end suffering. That Blessed One, the Gautama, Supreme Buddha is the knower of the worlds. He is the incomparable leader of persons to be tamed. He is the teacher of gods and humans. He can teach this Dhamma in an excellent way so that others can understand and achieve true happiness. He is the one and only extraordinary teacher in this world with all of these qualities. Friend, I have gone forth under that Blessed One. That Blessed One is my teacher. I like that Blessed One's Dhamma. With whom did he say this? With the Supreme Buddha. Then Supreme Buddha asked, but Bhikkhu, where is that Blessed One, the Arahant, the fully enlightened one, now living? Now he was very happy to explain about his great teacher. Friend, there is a city in the northern country named Savati. 
my great teacher, the Arahant, the fully enlightened, is now living there. And now I am on my way to meet the Supreme Buddha. Then Supreme Buddha asked, But Bhikkhu, have you ever seen that Blessed One before? Would you recognize him if you saw him? Then Pukusati answered, No friend, I have never seen that Blessed One before. Nor would I recognize him if I saw him. Because he, he had never seen before. Then the Blessed One thought, mm, This clansman has gone forth from the home life into homelessness under me. Think about his Sadha. He hadn't seen the Supreme Buddha. He hadn't heard that teaching in detail. But he had a pleasant mind about the name of the Buddha. And he, he realized, definitely, the Buddha means an extraordinary teacher. Okay, so Supreme Buddha realized about uh, this monk and thought, suppose I were to teach him the Dhamma. I were to teach him the Dhamma. So the Blessed One addressed the Venerable Pukusati thus. Now, there is a, a grass carpet, right, made out of grass. And then Supreme Buddha is sitting uh, in one corner of that mattress and the Pukusati is sitting near the Supreme Buddha. Is there the electricity? No. Maybe a an oil lamp in a corner so they can't see well each other but they can hear well now Pukusati is eager to discuss with this new friend so the blessed one addressed the venerable Pukusati thus Bhikkhu I will teach you the Dhamma listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Then Pukusati said, Oh, it's good. My new friend is very good. He is going to teach me the Dhamma. And he said, Yes, friend. Yes, I am ready. Please share your Dhamma with me. Then the Blessed One said this. Okay. This is about that exposition of the elements. Now Pukusati, this monk, was very fortunate to listen to this excellent teaching that he, he had never ever heard before. Supreme Buddha started. Now were there thousands of people there? A special Dhamma program? Monthly program? No. Now Supreme Buddha worked a long journey to meet this one person. Because Supreme Buddha can read others' minds and understand the maturity of their faculties. So many wise humans were born around the Supreme Buddha that time. That's how they realize the Dhamma quickly. But after that, when the years passed, that ability of humans, the ability of realizing the Four Noble Truths, deteriorated. It declined. That is the difference between uh, today and the time of the Buddha. So this Pukusati monk had that ability to grasp the teaching of an enlightened one very quickly. 
So Premuda understood that. Bhikkhu, this person consists of six elements. This life means the combination of six elements. This person consists of six bases of contact. Living means association of eighteen kinds of mental exploration. This is a very deep Dhamma. Okay? Pay attention and let's try to develop sadha about the knowledge of the Supreme Buddha and about the ability of Bhante Pukusati to grasp this profound teaching. Okay, so do you remember the, the theme of this exposition? Okay, this life means the combination of six elements. Second one, this life means another name for six bases of contact. Third one, living means association of 18 kinds of mental exploration. We can learn these things very clearly. Okay. And he has four foundations. Fourth, fourth one. He has four foundations. The tides of conceiving do not sweep over one who stands upon these foundations. And when the tides of conceiving no longer sweep over him, he is called a sage at peace. When he, the, the liberated one, doesn't cling to this life with the misperception of me, mine and myself, he is called a sage and arahant and he is at peace. One should not neglect wisdom, should preserve truth, should cultivate relinquishment, and should train for peace. Do you remember about the, the four foundations Supreme Buddha explained? He has four foundations. Okay, so these are the four foundations. One should not neglect wisdom, should preserve truth, should cultivate relinquishment, means giving. Okay? Yes. Generosity. Letting go. And should train for peace. This is the summary of the exposition of the six elements. It is the summary. Now, Supreme Buddha is going to explain these things in detail. What is the first theme of the summary? This life means hmm? the combination of six elements. Okay. Bhikkhu, this person consists of six elements. So it was said. And with reference to what was this said? Okay, so this is the teaching leading to what? Leading to the realization of the Four Noble Truths. This is the teaching leading to the true happiness. This is the teaching leading to develop wisdom. Monk, there are the earth element, water element, the fire element, the air element, 
the space element and the consciousness element. This person consists of six elements. So it was with reference to this that it was said. Now do you understand? Okay, this our life means the combination of six faculties. What are these six faculties? The earth element, the water element, the fire element, the air element, the space element, and the consciousness element. We know some of them, right? The first four elements. But here, there is a new explanation of the Supreme Buddha. What is the second theme of the exposition? Hmm? Life means another name for six bases of contact. Can you guess? Yes. Yes. And with reference to what was this said, Monk, there are the base of eye contact. The base of eye contact. The base of ear contact. Third one? The base of nose contact. Next one? The base of tongue contact. Next one? the base of body contact. Sixth one, the base of mind contact. Okay. Life means these six bases of contact. Now Supremda clarifies one by one. Now who is listening to this? Pukusati, that monk is listening to this excellent teaching that he had never heard before with eager eyes okay so the way to understand this uh, exposition is that one should try to develop wisdom In order to understand these things as they really are, without delusion. Now, delusion means, do we have an understanding that this life is a combination of six elements? No. Normally, uh, yes. Normally, we have an understanding that I have a name. Yes, I have a name. And this is my name. Okay, I am this person and yes this is my hair right and this is my body this is my skin like that but here in order to achieve true happiness one has to develop wisdom to understand this life as a combination of six elements. Okay. So Primud explains these things in detail. Similarly, when we see something, how do we understand it? These are my eyes. Yes, and I or oh, I am seeing, I am hearing, right? But here so Primud explains, in order to develop wisdom, one should understand, instead of, I am seeing, what? Yes, there is the base of eye contact in this life. with the meeting of or union of three things I, form and the consciousness consciousness of I yes contact arises that is the contact union of these three things is contact
when our attention changes when the external form changes that i consciousness also will change as a result of this change of these three things that contact will change now this is directly uh, leading to the development of insight meditation vipassana like that union of ear sound and the consciousness of ear is the contact of ear and there is this base of nose through the base of nose yes contact of nose arises there is this base of tongue through the base of tongue what arises the contact of tongue there is this base of body through the base of body the contact of body arises there is this mind base of mind through the base of mind the contact of mind arises do you remember the third uh, theme of this exposition hmm? living means association of 18 kinds of mental exploration you know explore normally we call explore the world but here explore the <laughs> explore one's life so it was said and with reference to what was this said okay uh, how many how many things 18 18 kinds of mental exploration so then we can understand this is something connected to the with the mind because mental mental exploration 18 on seeing a form with the eye one explores a form productive of joy one explores a form productive of grief one explores a form productive of equanimity okay the meaning is having seen a form when one remembers the features and signs of that form one can recollect that uh, seeing again when we see something it is recorded where in the mind okay when we saw something if a pleasant feeling arised at that time when we recollect it later what kind of feeling arises again that pleasant feeling arises that is the meaning exploration living means that what else are we doing we see something and it is recorded then yes we recall it and then we like to enjoy that pleasant feeling again and again and then we recall it isn't that the living Let's think about this knowledge of the buddha then okay it is the first one when we see something if an unpleasant feeling arises that is also recorded in the mind okay then we recall it again when we recall that what kind of feeling arises again again that unpleasant feeling arises second one sometimes we see things a feeling arises that is neither pleasant nor unpleasant okay 
equanimity arises. When we recall that later, again equanimity arises. Feeling, okay? Three. Okay. What is the total? Eighteen. Can you guess? Yes, it is connected with six faculties. Three is multiplied by six. Okay, in each faculty, when we hear something, yes, yes, uh, on hearing a sound with the ear, one explores that sound productive of joy. Joy means pleasantness, happiness, it is the fourth one. One explores the sound productive of unpleasantness, grief. Fifth one, one explores a sound productive of equanimity, right? Sixth one, like that, on hearing a sound with the ear, on smelling an odor with the nose, on tasting a flavor with the tongue, on touching a tangible with the body, and on cognizing a mind object with the mind. Living. Collecting feelings <laughs> and recalling them. Right? So it was with reference to this that it was said. Biko, this person consists of 18 kinds of mental exploration. Instead of thinking, I feel pleasant, I feel grief. If we pay attention to understand what is happening there, this thing, right? We saw something and it was recorded and then we are recalling that same object and then the, again that feeling arises. The, but we, what do we say? We say, oh it happened, I am very sorry now and <laughs> see the tears in my eyes, like that. Okay, But we have to go beyond that in order to achieve true happiness. Because this is the discovery of the Supreme Buddha about this mechanism uh, working within oneself, right? It's very, very important. Okay, do you remember the fourth theme of the exposition? Bhikkhu, this person has how many foundations? Four foundations. So it was said. And with reference to what was this said? There are the foundation of wisdom, second one, foundation of truth, third one, the foundation of giving up, you remember, relinquishment, last one, the foundation of peace. Okay, because this person has four foundations, that means so the previously mentioned teaching should be realized based on these four foundations. Okay? What is the first one? Foundation of wisdom. See, Supreme Buddha takes that. One should not neglect wisdom. Second one, truth. Should preserve truth. Third one, should cultivate relinquishment. Fourth one, yes, and should train for peace. How bhikkhu does one not neglect wisdom? That means, without uh, missing this opportunity, how to use this wisdom to achieve true happiness? Again, one has to use that wisdom in order to understand the previous the teaching. Do you remember that teaching? The, th the, the four themes? What is the first one? Life means the combination of six elements. 
now this is a very very rare opportunity for us we have obtained this opportunity to listen to the teaching of an enlightened one after a long time without knowing the way to true happiness we have suffered a lot but now we can say accidentally right can we say you remember that simile of that blind turtle we learn by chance right said by chance we d- we have no words to explain this opportunity to learn the way to true happiness how big could this one not neglect wisdom neglect wisdom means that understanding this very rare opportunity how to use this wisdom there are these six elements again supreme the explains what are these six elements the earth element the water element the fire element the air element the space element and the consciousness element now it's only the theme okay now this is the exposition what bhikkhu is the earth element okay so life means the combination of these six elements so then the life means earth element the uh, continuation of earth element now we have to think in a different way without thinking life means mine i myself okay because that is the way to sansara that is the way to tears sorrow lamentation okay now this is the way to true happiness okay what is that way the earth element may be either internal or external do you understand the external earth element this soil right this ground external earth element mountains rocks everything what is the internal earth element whatever internally belonging to oneself is solid solidified and clung to that is now you are going to have a mirror mirror of dham okay are you ready to use it okay internal earth element that is head hairs body hairs nails teeth skin flesh sinews bones bone marrow kidneys heart liver diaphragm spleen lungs intestines mesentery contents of the stomach excrement or whatever else internally this is called the internal earth element now both the internal earth element and the external earth element are simply earth element that means ah uh, we can't separate these thing oh these these are my body hairs these are my head hairs these are my teeth why these things think about this excellent discovery of the buddha these things will become one day a part of that external earth element of that ground our beautiful head hairs hmm? nails teeth we brush every day <laughs> we polish right our skin everything will become a part of this ground now do you understand the reason for our sansaric journey do you think that we had such a knowledge to investigate this life that way earlier no then we can understand oh this should be the direct way to true happiness this should be the one and only way to true happiness that is why it is so difficult otherwise everyone will follow it 
Yeah, let me check. People can follow. No. Then we can understand, oh, Supreme Buddha's knowledge is exactly, it is true. Now I can, I can understand why I couldn't escape from this sansara. Because this investigation is very new for us. Okay, now the both, the internal earth element and the external earth element are simply earth element. Now this is very important. And that should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom thus. This earth element is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. The way to true happiness. What is the meaning of this earth element is not mine? Going against this current. Against this stream, you know, against this stream. What is that? Earth element is not mine means head hairs are not mine. Body hairs are not mine. This skin is not mine. Bones are not mine. Is it the truth or not? That is the truth. We are suffering because of not realizing that. We are going to give ownership to these things and then cling to them, then cry. Think about this. Why do our teeth break and fall off? Because they are a part of the earth. But we say, oh my teeth, and we cry. When our long, beautiful head hairs fall off <laughs> and they become a part of the earth and we cry. Oh, I had a very beautiful hair previously. Oh, what happened to that? How do we think? These things are mine, myself and I am. That means these things should be under my control. Now developing the wisdom means understanding the true nature of this earth element. Okay, why can't we command these things? Let my head hairs be thus. They shouldn't fall off. They shouldn't grey. They shouldn't change. Let my skin be thus. If we had such, an, such a power, then all these companies of perfumes, right? Cosmetics. <laughs> and they would disappear from the world. Why? Then we could come on. No, I don't need any cream or something like that. Let my skin be thus. Let my teeth be thus. Think about this knowledge of the Buddha. But people use many things to take these things under their control and eventually they fail. If they recollect their whole life, they will find only tears, disappointment, fear of insecurity and these things. Those who understand this go beyond that ordinary imagination. This is the way to attain that state. Okay? When one sees it thus, thus means this earth element is not mine, I am not, not myself. As it actually is, actually is, not positive, not negative, but actual. As they really are is with proper wisdom one becomes disenchanted with the earth element. Nibbida. You know the disenchantment? Disenchantment means one understands. Oh! Why have I clung to these things? 
why am I trying to enjoy these things? These things are one day will become a part of the earth. So if I were to find gratification, happiness through these things, I would have to suffer because one day I am going to lose all these things. This enchantment. And makes the mind dispassionate towards the earth element. With that disenchantment, one understands, no, 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 this, this shouldn't be the way to true happiness. Clinging to these things, clinging to earth element, shouldn't be the way to true happiness. I shouldn't cling to these things, which lead to unhappiness. One makes the mind dispassionate towards the earth element. That is the result of that meditation. Understand? Insight meditation. What bhikkhu is the what element? The what element may be either internal or external. What is the external what element? Yes, see, ocean, rain and waters in the streams. Okay? Okay. If we spittle into that water, then can we find, oh, this is my spittle? Can we find, separate from that water? We put some blood there. Can we find out it later? Oh, this is my blood. Okay? Like that. And this glass of water. Okay, how did they bottle them? From? From the lakes and from uh, waterfalls and like that. Okay, when this water was there, in that waterfall, do we say, oh, in that waterfall, there is my water? <laughs> do we say? We, we even don't know. But when we drink it, my water. Right? Think about that. When we urinate, again it becomes a part of that external water element. But if someone hits us, to this body, because this body is, consists of such things. Uh, we feel, oh, he hit to my water element. <laughs> because now we think oh, that water is mine. And when we eat the things that grow on this ground, right, and uh, they are in the market. We go there and buy. Once we have eaten them, mine. When somebody somebody else buy, buys them, we don't know. But once we have eaten them, okay, mine. And when the body becomes bigger and bigger, <laughs> with that carrot, <laughs> rice, curry and all those things, if someone were to blame us or hit us, we get angry. Why? He hit my body. Right? Think about this ignorance. Whatever internally belonging to oneself is water, watery. That is bile, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, fat, tears, grease, spittle, snort, oil of the joints, urine or whatever else internally. Belonging to oneself is water, watery. This is called the internal water element. So when we die, these things become the part of this water element. Before our death, while we are still alive, the things are becoming, yes, the part of this, internal, external earth element and water element. Now both the internal water element and the external water element are simply water element. Like you can't control the earthquakes. Do you have a power over the tsunami? External water element. Do you have a control over them? in the same way. Because internal water element is also a part of that. 
like we don't have uh, power to control external earth element earthquakes uh, the change of the external water element tsunami we don't have uh, power to control this internal earth element and what this should be the realization investigation should be developed up to this level to understand that this internal water element and the external water element are simply water element and that should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom thus what element is not mine i am not not myself when one sees it thus as it actually is with proper wisdom one becomes disenchanted with the what element why oh did i cling to this grease tears fat pus blood oh i have clung to these things haven't we haven't we clung to these things but we don't know do we you don't know we say i have clung to that person <laughs> i have to clung i have clung to that boy i have clung to that girl but we have clung to <laughs> yes blood tears fat grease do you understand when the true knowledge arises ah uh, that's called disenchanted oh what has happened to me where have i entangled one makes the mind dispassionate towards the what element he no longer enjoys such things because he he knows the reality what bhikkhu is the fire element third one fire element. the fire element may be the internal or external what is the internal fire element yes whatever internally belonging to oneself is fire fiery and clung to that is that by which one is warmed okay ages ah oh, think about that we, did we know about that because of this heat inside our body we our body is changing we are aging think about that we need oh my heat in the body is good is good for me when it is cold i am protected by this heat but on the other hand what is it doing <laughs> yes it is the reason for our aging that heat and is consumed and that by which what is eaten drunk consumed and taste tasted gets completely digested when we put things through our mouth they go into the stomach and gets digestion who does that we do we do that then we can delay it that okay i want to keep my food for a long time <laughs> don't get this enchanted this uh, uh, digested them no think about that we think this life is my ours can we change the things working inside our body no when we get a cancer can we change change that we can that's why we should realize this dhamma or whatever uh, else internally belonging to oneself is fire fiery this is called the internal fire element okay how should the wisdom be developed hmm how that should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom how both the internal fire element and the external fire element are simply fire element this fire element is not mine i am not not myself that is how when one become sick if this knowledge is there in that in his life he understand okay when we have fever what happens to that internal fire element it has changed that is how we we feel hot inside our body 
but do you have an understanding oh my internal fire element has changed now i shouldn't cry i should understand because supreme dha has taught i don't have a, a, a control over this because this belongs to the external fire element do we think like that or do we cry oh mother father <laughs> please give me medicine i have this fever this cold right think about that those who understand they take medicine because they know they want to survive until they realize this dhamma they want to protect this human life but they are far away from tears do you understand they don't cry that is the way to true happiness what is the fourth one yes what bhikkhu is the air element now supreme buddha explains this teaching that pukusati bhikkhu now about the mind of an arahant okay so it is very important one day we also should achieve this state of mind to see these things in this same way because this is how an arahant uh, understands what is the internal air element okay air element may be either internal or external internal air element uh, upgoing winds comes from our mouth upgoing winds downgoing winds winds in the belly winds in the bowels winds in the course through the limbs when we bend our limbs hands and the wind supports to do that it is inside our limbs inside the body in breath and out breath okay what is external air element wind when external air element changes tornado can we change that don't hey tornado don't come towards me can we in the same way when the internal AI element changes can we command that is that is the thing that we should understand now both the internal AI element and the external AI element are simply AI element which them should be developed to understand this AI element is not mine i am not not myself the way to true happiness otherwise we try to control uh, internal earth element at the same time we try to control the tornadoes but in both cases we will fail when one sees it thus as actually is with proper wisdom one becomes disenchanted with the what ai element or oh, did they cling to this they understand and makes the mind dispassionate towards the ai element why am i clinging to a changing thing that's how they escape from suffering okay next one space element okay this is uh, fifth one right space element think about the the real the the greatest scientist is the supreme buddha people go there uh, find in the external space and build many things there and right supreme buddha discovered the internal space and escape from suffering the space element may be either internal or external what is the internal space element do you know the external space element external space element hmm? now there is space here if you put something here that space changes external space like that do you understand the internal space element 
the holes of the ears. If you put your finger, whatever is that space, impermanent, subject to change. Supremud explains, the nostrils, the door of the mouth, and the aperture whereby what is eaten, drunk, consumed, and tasted, gets swallowed, and where it collects, and whereby it is excreted from below, or whatever else internally, belonging to oneself, is space, spatial and clung to. This is called the internal space element. Now both the internal space element and the external space element are simply space element, subject to change. How, how the de uh, wisdom should be developed? This space element is not mine, I am not, not myself. When one sees it thus as it actually is with proper wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with space element and makes the mind dispassionate towards the space element. Okay. Is there anything else that we cling to apart from this earth element, water element, fire element, air element and space element? Yes, through our consciousness we cling to these things because in order to cling, one has to use the consciousness, cognizing. Okay, using the consciousness, is there anything else that we cling to? Apart from head hairs, body hairs, now you can think, teeth, skin, yes, it's connected to consciousness, okay? Always our consciousness or mind or thought lands on these areas, right? Do you understand? On the earth element, what element, and no, in these areas. Okay. If the mind becomes dispassionate towards all these areas, that means consciousness doesn't get established on earth element, no on water element, no on air element, no on fire element, no on space element. What is that consciousness? Now can we imagine in this present condition about a consciousness that is apart from these th areas. No, always we cognize these things. But when the mind dispassionate towards these areas, there then remains only consciousness purified and bright. What does one cognize with that consciousness? One cognizes this is pleasant. With that purified, bright consciousness, one cognizes this is pleasant. One cognizes this is painful. One cognizes this is neither painful nor pleasant. That means at that time they can see very clearly how the feelings arise. Now, in this present condition, when pleasant feeling arises, unpleasant feeling arises, neutral feeling arises, we are not aware of the arising and passing away of these feelings. We just react. Sometimes we feel sad, sometimes we overjoy when pleasant feeling arises. Do we understand the arising and passing away of these things? No, because always consciousness is bounded with other things with other elements. When the consciousness is removed from those elements, using that consciousness one understands very clearly this is pleasant, this is unpleasant, this is neutral. 
and he understands independence on a contact to be felt as pleasant there arises a pleasant feeling that's it when one feels a pleasant feeling one understands i feel a pleasant feeling what is the reason for the arising of that pleasant feeling contact to be felt as pleasant with the cessation of that same contact to be felt as pleasant its corresponding feeling that pleasant feeling that arose in dependence on that contact to be felt as pleasant what happens to that feeling ceases with the cessation of contact feeling ceases and subsides you understand that purified and bright consciousness what does it do it understands very clearly how a feeling arises how a feeling ceases instead of laughing and crying laughing for pleasant feelings crying for unpleasant feelings because of not understanding that now that is why now in this world when pleasant feeling arise people want to hold on them forever and they pray they pray and they ask god please don't change this pleasant feeling right and they think oh we have been very rich now these days and we have a great wealth please don't change our pleasant feelings but they don't know pleasant feelings arise dependent on pleasant contacts when the pleasant contact changes that feeling will change that's why they don't pray they know god can't do that right that's why they don't pray that's why they don't have horoscopes that's why they don't have auspicious times so called auspicious times they know happiness doesn't depend on the auspicious time but depends on contact plus and contact like that one cognizes with that purified and bright consciousness what is second kind of feeling hmm painful feeling okay in dependence on a contact to be felt what is the reason for that painful feeling yes on a contact to be felt as painful there arises a painful feeling when someone blames they don't blame back to that person why they understand oh an unpleasant feeling has arisen through the contact of ear this arised due to the unpleasant contact when this contact changes the feeling will change they don't get angry that's how anger is eradicated completely one understands when one feels a painful feeling i feel a painful feeling one understands with the cessation of that same contact yes the feeling painful feeling that arose in dependence on that contact also ceases and subsides like that independence on a neutral uh, contact a neutral feeling arises he understands i am feeling a neutral feeling but with the cessation of this neutral contact this feeling yes will change bikku just as from the contact and friction of two fire sticks you know fire sticks heat is generated when they are they get uh, connected together and rubbed yeah yeah when you rub it fire is produced and with the separation and this junction of these two fire sticks that heat ceases and subsides so too independence on uh, contact to be felt as pleasant feeling a pleasant feeling arises with the cessation of this contact that feeling ceases like that with regard to three kinds of feelings 
then there remains only equanimity purified and bright malleable wieldy and radiant uh, supreme dex means suppose bhikkhu a skilled goldsmith or his apparent is were to prepare a furnace you know furnace okay heat up the crucible take some gold with tongs and put into the crucible the people the goldsmith who uh, use that um, heat right to prepare the uh, yes earrings necklace and these things okay and from time to time he would blow on it from using gold okay from time to time he would just look on uh, sprinkle water over it and from time to time he would just look on that gold would become refined well refined completely refined rid of dross and radiant then whatever kind of ornament he wished to make from it whether a golden chain or earrings or necklace or a golden garland it would serve his purpose so to be co then there remains only equanimity purified and bright okay so he then he can use that equanimous mind to achieve the base of infinite space akin chanyayatana you know vinyana chanyayatana neva sanyana sanyayatana vi ada arupa jhanas now uh, now he developed this equanimous mind here with the support of the four formless jhanas developing first jhana second jhana third jhana and the fourth jhana this is called vipassana pubbangamo samatho that means uh, using the object of an insight meditation first and then the serene meditation is developed you know how one develops the insight meditation first about that investigation of elements because of that investigation is called vida vipassana pubbangam okay insight meditation comes first for some people because of that insight meditation his mind becomes concentrated samatha jhanas for some people samatha pubbangam sarir meditation comes first and then insight is developed now this would explain about first insight and then with the help of that investigation concentration is developed up to jhanas okay and here he can develop formless jhanas the base of infinite space and he he thinks if i were to direct this equanimity to the base of infinite space and to develop my mind accordingly then this equanimity of mind supported by that blaze clinging to it would remain for a very long time now he can keep it his equanimous mind for a long time by developing infinite space base of infinite he thinks like that and he, he thinks if i were to direct this equanimity to the base of infinite consciousness to the base of nothingness to the base of neither perception nor non perception it would remain for a very long time then he understands thus if i were to direct this equanimity to the base of infinite space this would be con- conditioned that jhana is also a conditioned one subject to change and impermanent he does not form any condition or generate any volition tending towards either existence or non existence since he does not form any condition now when he comes to this stage he doesn't want to keep his mind like enjoying the bliss of formless jhanas or all like that but he understands these jhanas are also impermanent and subject to change so he he now he pays attention to nibbana to the destruction of craving since he does not form any condition or generate any volition towards either 
existence or non-existence. These are two extremes. Bhavaya and Vibhavaya. He does not cling to anything in this world. When he does not cling, he is not agitated. Uh, why do we become agitated? Because of clinging. Now he abandoned everything one by one. Sensual desire, anger, defilements connected with the lack of knowledge of the arising of feeling. Finally he abandoned all kinds of craving clinging, attachments and everything, even for the very subtle states of the mind. Now, jhanas means blissful states. So, he even eradicated craving for such subtle happiness. He is not agitated. When he is not agitated, he personally attains Nibbana. He understands thus, birth is destroyed. The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more to be done further to escape from suffering. There is an arahant. This is the realization of an arahant. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Now, after that, this is how an arahant lives. Now, normally, uh, when someone becomes an arahant, how do we understand that? He disappears or vanishes like that? Huh? Some people think like that. In Sri Lanka, when, when a book is kept here and when after some time when he finds it, when that book is not there, what happens with that? Hmm? He thinks like, like when it disappears, like arahants are also like that. Arahans also disappear like that. That's because of not understanding. Arahanship means this. Understanding the true nature of this life and then the escape from cycle and of birth and death and the escape from all the defilements of the mind. Now, he eats. He has these eyes. He speaks. He preaches the Dhamma. Until he attain final Passing away, Paranibbana. If until then, if he feels a pleasant feeling, he understands it is impermanent. There is no holding to it. There is no delight in it. Now, this is Abhidham. This is Abhidham. This is the, the most profound and deep Dham. You can't find more profound Dhamma than this. Okay? If he feels a painful feeling, he understands it is impermanent. There is no holding to it. There is no delight in it. If he feels a neutral feeling, he understands it is impermanent. There is no holding to it. There is no delight in it. If he feels a pleasant feeling, he feels it detached. Detached means Yes, in Arahant's lives, pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, neutral feeling arise. But there is not a connection of defilements in the mind to these feelings. Detached. If he feels a painful feeling, neutral feeling, he feels them detached. When he feels feeling terminating with the body, when he feels a feeling terminating with the life, he understands. I feel a feeling terminating with the body and terminating with the life. When I abandon this body, all feelings will be cool there and without holding on to them. Right? Because just as an oil lamp burns, in dependence on oil and the wick, and when the oil and wick are used up, if it does not get any more fuel, it is extinguished from lack of fuel. So too, when he feels a feeling, he understands. Like that, he understands, un as long as my body lasts, I will feel these feelings. When I attain final passing, it is the end of all feelings. No more rebirth. 
okay with the ending of life all that is felt not being delighted in will become cool right there therefore a bhikkhu possessing this wisdom possess the supreme foundation of wisdom now supreme explains about the development of that foundation of wisdom so far now that explanation is finished for this is the supreme noble wisdom namely the knowledge of the destruction of all suffering now at this point that monk has escaped from all suffering what is the supreme wisdom the knowledge of the destruction of all suffering the way one understands the birth is destroyed i have escaped from rebirth escaped from this cycle of birth and death that knowledge is the supreme wisdom his deliverance is unshakable unshakable means no he doesn't have anything to do further right anything more no unshakable not changing for that is false bhikkhu which has a deceptive nature and that is true which has an undeceptive nature that means everything else is subject to change so if one thinks they are shakable it is false but nibbana is unshakable so therefore this is the ultimate truth supreme foundation of truth for this is the supreme noble truth namely nibbana which has an unshakable nature truth okay formerly when he was ignorant he undertook and accepted defilements but now he has abandoned them so he has abandoned covetousness desire and lust and everything so they are no more longer subject to future arising they are for a big process in this peace possess the supreme foundation of peace why don't we have peace because of defilements when all the defilements are eradicated peace there is peace that is the foundation of peace for this bhikkhu is the supreme noble peace namely the eradication of lust hate and delusion do you understand now wisdom truth peace relinquishment this is very important supreme mudd explains when he with when this arahant has abandoned the conceit and uh, conceiving i am i am this i shall be this i shall not be this and like that by overcoming all conceivings one is called a sage at peace and okay listen to this and the sage at peace is not born does not age does not die he is not shaken and is not agitated for there is nothing present in him by which he might be born not being born how could he age why do we age because we have been born but this sage arahant is not reborn not being born how could he age not aging how could he die not dying how could he be shaken not being shaken why should he be agitated think about that he has escaped from six elements second team six bases of contact third team 18 kinds of mental explanation he has escaped from everything the tides of conceiving do not sweep over one who stands upon these foundations that means he has escaped from all defilements and suffering he is called a sage at peace bhikkhu bear in this mind this explanation
So do you remember the last one? Railing placement? Yes. The so the the noble relinquishment means the abandonment of all defilements. Now we also practice a relinquishment, giving generosity, giving food and other things. What is the best relinquishment? Best giving up? Giving the up the defilements. Okay. So bear in mind this brief exposition of the six elements. Now this is the exposition of six elements. Now who was listening to this? You you know what he happened to him? Thereupon the venerable Pukusadi thought Indeed the teacher has come to me. How did he understand? Through the Dhamma. So Dhammam Pasati So Mam Pasati. The one who understands the teaching understands the Buddha, recognizes. The greatest teacher has come to me. The fully enlightenment has come to me. Then Pukusadibhante rose from his seat. Do you, can you imagine the situation there? Arranged his upper robe over one shoulder and prostrating himself with his head at the Blessed One's feet. Touching the Blessed One's feet at, the, at his head. He said, Bhante, please forgive me. This time he said, Bhante. Previously? A transgression overcame me in that like a fool, confused, I presumed to address the Blessed One as a friend. Bhante, may the Blessed One forgive my transgression, seen as such for the sake of restraint in the future. Please forgive me. Surely, Bhikkhu, in that like a fool, a transgression overcame you. Confused, you presume to address me as friend, but since you see your fault as such and make amends in accordance with the Dhamma, we forgive you. For it is growth in the noble one's discipline when one sees one's fault as such. When one understands, when one accepts, oh, I did this mistake, it's a development. Okay? Without hiding it, right? Supreme the praised. Bhante, I would receive the full admission under the Blessed One. I want to become a monk under the Blessed One. Supreme the asked, but are your ball and robes complete, Bhikkhu? Your robes and ball. Because there should be three robes for a monk for a full admission and a ball. Okay. Bhante, my ball and robes are not complete. Bhikkhu, Tathagata, Supreme Buddhas, do not give the full admission to anyone whose ball and robes are not complete. Then the Bhante Pukusati, having delighted and rejoiced, and he, he hurried, Okay, okay, Bhante, I will come with my robes and bowl. Bhante rejoiced in the Blessed One words, rose from his seat and after paying homage to the Blessed One, Bhante departed. Why? In order to search for a ball and robes. Then the while the Bhante Pukusati was searching for a ball and robes, a uh, stray cow followed him. You know, in India, stray cow without owners, cows are everywhere. A cow killed Pukusadi Bhante, attacked and killed. Then a number of bhikkhus went to the Blessed One and paid homage and sat down to one side and told the Bhante, Supreme Buddha, Bhante, the clansman Pukkusati, the bhikkhu Pukkusati, who was given brief instruction by the Blessed One, has died. What is his destination? You know that wise question? You always remind that question. What is his 
destination when someone dies wise people question what is his future course the all seeing all knowing extraordinary teacher answered because the clansman pukusati was very wise he practiced in accordance with the dhamma and did not trouble me in the interpretation of the dhamma pukusati bikku with the destruction of the five law of fetters pukusati has reappeared spontaneously in the pure abode and will attain final nibbana there without ever returning from that world that means anagami while he was sitting there listening to that excellent teaching he had become a non return anagami he exceeded the stage of stream entrant once return and non return last one or maybe now by this time he has become an arahant and escape from this cycle may our homage to the excellent teacher the trainer of persons the supreme buddha sadhu sadhu sad homage to that pukusati bante sadhu 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 this is what the blessed one said the bhikkhus were satisfied and delighted in the blessed ones words sadhu 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 pukusati bante became an anagami non returner in order to become a non returner which dhamm did that bante use this sutta right the things that were in that sutta so can't be very, very happy because if we can follow these things if we can develop our investigation using this teaching yes that power is in this dhamma okay because pokusadi bante listen to until this dhamma for the first time may all of us have the fortune to listen to this excellent teaching of the supreme buddha and realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sad sad sa so let's share our merit with our teacher luku swami mahase we collect a lot of merit by offering puja items to the buddha Uh, reciting sutta spreading loving kindness listening to the dhamma preaching the dhamma may lok swami na se realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sad 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 may all devas rejoice in this merit and uh, realize this dhamma sad 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 May all dead relatives rejoice in this merit and have happy lives. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May all of us have the fortune to achieve true happiness by realizing this extraordinary teaching of the Supreme Buddha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Do you remember the name of the Sutta? Dhatu. vibhanga vibhanga means exposition dhatu means elements exposition of elements so may you be healthy happy and well abhivadana silis nitsang vadda pachayinu chattaro dhamma vaddanti ayuvannu sukham balam ayurarogya sampatti sagya sampatti mevacha अतो निबाण संपत्ति इमिनाते समिच्छतु सुखी हो तो सुखी हो तो साल साधु अनुमोदामी 
साधु अनुमोदित है खमामी का मिताब बंग सुखी हो तो दुखा मचान तो मैं भी बिल्लन है